today our topic is about women you know the Muslim they have tons of articles and there is uh, a specific post they always post in the internet and to show you that the Prophet he appreciate women and mothers and one of them is a very famous one that Muhammad he said there is one they keep repeating that the, uh, the, the heaven under the feet of the mothers that that is not really accepted but there is different one which is saying uh, he was saying to a man uh, that the heaven is under your mother feet so it's the same but it's not what they keep repeating and this one is sahih but what does that mean the heaven under your mother feet the Muslim they say that's mean the Quran he order us to respect our mothers and to treat them and by doing that we go to heaven well I like that actually that's wonderful but Muhammad did not respect his mother he did not respect his father he claimed that both of them they are going to go to hell and not only that Muhammad in the Quran he said najis." those who they are mushrikeen Muslims they knew what mushrikeen right those who associate with Allah they are najis so when Muhammad he says the mushrikeen are najis he included his mother for she was from the mushrikeen how respectful that is to say to your mother you are filthy najis in Arabic is more than filthy it's something you cannot wash it's you are so dirty so in the Muslim the translation they say the pagans are unclean which is not really a good translation so if you respect your mother you say to her you are filthy you say to her you are a sinner uh, we, you know etc uh, but uh, filthy that's not a statement to say to your mother even if she is filthy even if she is so when we speak about respecting mothers mothers can be in the same time can be a daughter like your mother she is the daughter of your grandfather right grandmother she's a daughter in the same time she's a sister in the same time she's a wife so if Allah he said or Muhammad he said that women under their feet is heaven and then he say that women they will the women themselves who which under their feet is heaven which means if you do good to them your mothers you go to heaven but women themselves they will not go to heaven if you go in the hadith you will see Muhammad saying that the majority of people of hell are women now how majority of women in he in hell and the heaven is under their feet so you are saying to me uh, if you are nice to your mother you go to heaven but your mother most likely she is going to go to hell Muhammad he said in the hadith and let us see if we can find it in English <laughs> read with me carefully and laugh Muhammad here accused women that they have half a brain they have a lack of common sense they have a lack of intelligence in other way sorry to say he is saying women are stupid and because they have menstruation and because they are stupid and because they are ungrateful they will go to hell and the majority of people of hell are women read carefully it's not my words this is, their, this is their translation this is their words so Muhammad he says I will go to heaven if I am nice to my mother then he says my mother most likely she will go to hell he said as you see in the screen that he saw that the Delawares of the hell are women And he's asking them to donate for him. He's scaring them so to give donation. And they start giving them his rings, their rings, their 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 earring. You know, it's a scam. So when you respect your mother, do you say to your mother, you have lack of wisdom and intelligence? Do you say to your mother, you are stupid? If I am a Muslim and I'm speaking to my mother, and I want to prove to her something the Prophet he said, I will use his logic. I will say, mother, give it charity, give to Muhammad money, because you have a lack of intelligence. And you will see here in the translation, the Muslim translation, it says, 
they have deficiency in their intelligence a woman she asked Muhammad she said why we will go to heaven and what is the proof of that he said huh she said to him what is our deficiency deficiency Muhammad is speaking about you have a deficiency and you are not a full creature like the man you have deficiency or stupid so the Quran the Muslim they say the Quran respect the women the Quran respect the women respect respect the women and then we say to them you have deficiency in your brain and you are stupid and you are going to go to hell And the Quran don't make them equal to us in the court. And actually in the capital punishment, women are not allowed to witness, which means women, they can witness only if a man borrow money, two women equal to one man. So she is half man. And in the case of capital, which means if a man killed a man, a woman, she is not allowed to witness at all because she is not considered to be a full human being. Women who disobey their husband, Muhammad, he described them as sufaha. Sufaha mean the stupid ones. A stupid one is the one who don't obey their husbands. What if the husband is bad? I cannot find this hadith in English, but it's okay. What does that mean? Why men are, there's no men, they are sufaha. There's no men are stupid. What about Muhammad say, women should not obey, obey a husband, he is stupid. Only the women she have to obey, and the women who don't disobey, she is the stupid one. If the man he invite his wife to the bed and she refuse, the angels of Allah will curse her all day long. We respect the women, and now the women she don't want to sleep with me, so now we terrify her by saying that God and his angels are going to curse you because you did not take off your panty. So you have better and do it now. And the top of that, we can beat them. It's a solution. You see, I saw an article that says, the title of the article says, the verse of abuse or the abused verse. And the whole article written by Muslims is to defend the Quran, saying Quran teach you rule of family. Quran teach you the right of family. Women, they have right in Islam. What rights? Right of women in Islam to be beaten if they are disobedient. This is the first right. As long you are obedient, you have rights. The right of what? To remain, to remain silence. So look at this article, how stupid it is. He is posting for us a verse. And then in the verse, he starts start adding like, you know, uh, admonish them first. He put the word first. I don't know where the word first coming from. Then distance from them. Where is the word then is coming from? And from bed where it says that it says which means jail them in their rooms and then he said and tap them tap tap them the word beating became tap them I mean isn't it hilarious so in order to convince you that Islam respect women we start lying switching the word from beat them to tap them I mean they are the same to be honest with you not much different this is the same Quran, and this is the, the website of the Muslims, and this is their translation. And you will see here the word tab them, it says discourage them. Remember, this is a punishment, it's a penalty. So, what do you mean tab them? You are forcing them to obey you by tabbing them? I mean, who is going to believe this stupid thing? Muhammad, he whipped people for obedience. Muhammad, he whipped people for doing, uh, 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 like, uh, not praying. Muhammad, he whipped the slaves. Muhammad, 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 Muhammad. Muhammad, he whipped Muslims. And now you are saying to me, a woman, she is disobedient. Tap them. But the Quran says, Adrubuhunna, scourge them. The hadith come from what kind of beating? You beat them until you make their skin green. And this is a woman, she came to Muhammad, complained about her husband, who did beat her until he made her skin greener than her, uh, 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 than her clothes. And Aisha, she witnessed, saying, I never saw a believing woman. She suffered as much as a woman. She, she suffered as a believing woman. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. Did Muhammad, you can read the whole hadith just to save the time. And this is the reference. Hadith number 5, 8, 2, 5. Muhammad, he took the side of the man and he against the women and he never said to him, why did you beat her? 
actually the hadith says a man should not be questions why questioned why he did beat his wife a man should not be questioned why he did beat his wife the prophet said no man shall be asked the reason for beating his wife remember in the article tab them so in Islam we respect women but we beat them in Islam we respect women but we divorce them by text message in Islam we respect women but we have many of them one in the top of the other and the other until we have four and then we can we can exchange all the four by one text message I can send I can create now a text uh, a message group for my wives and send one text message to the four wives saying you are divorced and you are divorced so heaven is under the feet of your mother but you can beat your mother but not you your father you ask your father can you beat my mom we respect women in islam but we say they are half a brain we respect women in islam but a virgin she have no right to accept or to refuse as what happened to Aisha as an example. Aisha, she was a six years old. And they took her to Muhammad. Did they ask her, would you like to get married six years old? Muhammad, he considered the women as the devil. He says, the women, she come in the image of a devil and she live in the image of the devil. But remember, this is your mother, the one who Muhammad said that under her feet is heaven. So when Muslims, speak about heaven they are talking about what exactly even muhammad he advised muslims to hang the whip on their houses why here the hadith did not give the, the whole story this is the story they are asking if this is true or not and the answer yes did the prophet order to hang the whip on his wall because this is to teach him how to be polite <laughs> terror you the first thing you show your wife in the house is a whip and that will teach her how because now she will fear you and you do not need to use it anymore just put it there as a reminder that if you don't obey me i will whip your back so when a Muslim he speak about respecting mothers and not to mention not to forget to mention heaven women you know they are even in heaven they will be sex toys in earth they are sex toys you know we can beat them we can abuse them uh, uh, they are half a brain they are stupid uh, uh, you know and then Muslims they say to you Muhammad he says don't beat them until you break them look how nice he is what about you say to them don't beat them at all you made a verse saying beat them and then you say to them don't beat them until you break them <laughs> so i don't want to uh, uh, you know give it more time i'm trying to keep the video shorter i, I could not make it five minutes as you see There's, it's impossible maybe but my friends when those people they speak about respect respect for a woman is not by saying to her you are half a brain if a muslim he say to you Oh, you know what? When we beat a wife, do you know the prophet? He ordered us. He ordered us to beat by the miswak. What is that? And do you know what the miswak is? The miswak is a long branch from the roots of a tree grow in the desert. Very harmful. And it is the same branch. They use it or root to beat the camel with it. And they cut it in small pieces to sell it now these days. But it's a long root and it's very flexible. So this is how the Muslim they beat their wife. Long root. This is now this is this is cut off. You can tell from the picture they cut it off. It's a long root. They use it as a whip. Very cheap. You don't need to pay for it. It's in the ground. And they are saying to them, beat them lightly. What do you think about somebody he spit on you? How lightly is that? You see, there's two kinds of injury. There's the injury of insult, and there's the injury which is physical. Islam practice both on you if you are a woman. While Jesus, he warned the man not to divorce his wife just because he followed his desire to switch to a new and a, a younger woman. He warned them and he forbid them from doing such a thing. He commit a big sin, the one who do so. 
Muhammad he made it so easy to the point even he said that if a woman her husband divorce her not only he say in chapter 4 verse number 34 women are in charge and they are better than men sorry uh, uh, men are in charge and they are better than women and not only he said beat them not only he said if they obey you don't beat them no more he said too that women I'm not sure how to say this thing here women if they are obedient to their husbands they go to heaven if they are not obedient the angels will curse them they will go to hell most of women they will go to hell so who's going to go to heaven which women is the one will go to heaven the verse in the front of you it says and the good women of you is the one who is obedient to her husband you see the bible says teach obedient to the husband too but what if the husband is a bad person what if he is ill sick in his mind what if he is a stupid why the Quran did not make a verse says well if the man is bad then don't obey him you will notice that Muhammad in the Quran he mentioned the word shoes and this word he himself he practiced it so when Muhammad he practiced the shoes which mean you know misconduct let us say they are not obedient you beat them but if Muhammad he practiced himself the word shoes it's okay As we see here, he made a deal with Sauda, the old wife. The same chapter is speaking about the same word twice. 434-4128. In 4128, Muhammad is the one who is bad to the wife. He don't want to sleep with her. In verse number 434, the women are not being obedient. So in case of my, the man, Muhammad, he don't want to speak with the women, it's okay. No problem. It says, La jana hali, uh, you know, there is no problem. They can make an agreement. He don't want to sleep with her. No problem. But in the case of the women, she don't want to sleep with you or she disobedience, you beat the hell of her. There's no blame. You can arrange. So he make an arrangement with, with Sauda because uh, uh, Zainab, so, sorry, uh, Aisha, she convinced him, well, don't divorce her so I can have a, her day. She have a day designed for her, right? Okay, just keep her. This way I can have you two days in the week. <laughs> Come on. Or every, every 13 days. Look how evil she is. And now the old women, because she's old and she doesn't know where to go, she wants a retirement plan. She was scared, terrified, where I would go. What happened? Why he wouldn't divorce me? What I did? Nothing. She's old. So we respect the women in Islam, but if they do what the men do, we beat them. If the men do what the women did, we praise them. Men, they will go to heaven. Women, they will go to hell. Men are smart. Women, they are stupid. Men, they have no deficiency. M women have deficiency. Women, put the put the whip in the in the top of your wall so you can make them fear you. Have sex with the children who they are females. This is respect. Do circumcision for women. This is respect. Have four wives and replace as many as you want. This is respect. In the heaven, the women she is a sex toy. This is respect. In earth, women are discriminated. They have to be jailed. They have to wear burqa. They can't even do, use their eyes normally. In Islam, this is all is a form of respect. This is what they say to us. So who is the stupid here? Even Muhammad, he compared the women to a crocked rip. Crocked rip. Why she is a crocked? What is a crock about her? And if they are a crock, why you have too many of them? And if you enjoy her, enjoy her when she is crocked. That's what Muhammad said. <laughs> She's a crocked.
And by the way, the Muslims, they use those hadith to make Muhammad look good. Muhammad, he said, the most troubling thing for men is women. Look who is talking. The one who have hundreds of women for sex. The women are respected in Islam, my friend, to the point three things would disturb a Muslim prayer and would defile the Muslim prayer, a dog and a donkey and the women. And if you, after all of this, you think women are not respected, that's mean you are a fool. What do you want more than this? Three things will disturb and will destroy your prayer. Somebody sent me saying like, oh, the translation here says it's just disturb, not uh, the, the, like destroy. No, my friend, it destroy. Your, your prayer is not valid no more if a woman or a dog and a donkey walk by when you are praying. What kind of religion this religion is? Black dog and a donkey and a woman. What is the connection between a black dog and a donkey and the women? You tell me. For sure, this is all is a form of respect. This is how Muhammad, he taught his followers to respect women by comparing them to dogs and donkeys and to make them the reason for your prayer not to be accepted. So for those who say and they claim that Islam respect women, prove it because everything you say is destroyed. Women is a donkey and a dog. Women is half a brain. Women, we can beat them. Women are not equal witness in the court. Women, they cannot leave their house without permission. Women, we have to hide, to, to put the whip in the top of the wall to scare them. Women, we can beat them until they obey us. Women, we can have too many of them until we are satisfied and the one shouldn't satisfy us no more because she's getting old. We get rid of her. And not only that, the inheritance shouldn't have equal inheritance. And the Muslim, they say, Islam gave the women right. And they say to you, you know, the women she used not to inherit, what a big fat liars. Isn't it Khadija, she was the wife of Muhammad and she is his boss. And she was one of the most rich women in, in, in Quraysh. And she had two husbands before Muhammad, so inherit, she inherited what then? The money she had from where? She robbed a bank? So what they say to you is something and Islam is something else. So I want to say thank you for all those who do the help to spread the truth, who translate, who share it, and who uh, learn and teach others. God bless you, and thank you very much.